Certainly the Lord is good. It's good once again to be in the house of the Lord. And he's been so awesome and so kind and so merciful. And we pray that all is well with each of you. I want to call your attention today to the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. Uh, I want to just read just a few of those verses, beginning at verse 1 from the New King James Version. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by sight of his eyes, nor decide by hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Verses 1 through 4 of the 11th chapter of Isaiah. We want to reason with you today with the subject, God's glorious kingdom. God's glorious kingdom. Three main points we want to emphasize, the first one being 1,000 years, 1,000 years. Point number two, trouble removed, trouble removed. And point number three, peace reigns, peace reigns. The Assyrian empire would fall and that is already mentioned in chapter 10 verses 5 through 34 but another empire will arise this section about God's empire or I would use the word kingdom itself and the remnant who will in inhabit the kingdom. Chapter 11, verse 1, the Lord would cut down the forests and the mighty trees. That's actually in chapter 10, verse 33 through 34. That is, foreign soldiers and leaders, but God's kingdom will arise by a shoot coming up from the stump of Jesse, David's father. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16 speaks to that. God's promise to David that a descendant of David will rule over his kingdom, which was really a dynasty, Isaiah 9 and 7, would rule over the kingdom forever. This branch, which is really speaking of the Messiah, Jeremiah 23 and 5, will bear fruit, that is, prosper and benefit others. He is the root out of dry ground. Isaiah 53 and 2. He is the tender shoot, which speaks of an arid or desert, a dry area, spiritually speaking, where one would not expect a large plant to grow. 11, 2 through 3a speaks of character and work of the branch. They are described, the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. 
This is the Holy Spirit that empowers, characterized by wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. He is called the Wonderful Counselor, Isaiah 9 and 6. Fear speaks of the fact that uh, he will respond in awe, in trust, in obedience and worship. And this includes the whole Godhead. The spy, the Messiah, will judge the world with righteousness and faithfulness, with justice to the poor and needy. The wicked will be slain. 11, 6 through 9 speaks of righteousness in the kingdom, which is my first point. That thousand years is called the millennium. But during the millennium, which comes forth after the great tribulation, which sometimes is called Jacob's trouble, in the millennium, the curse will be lifted. Peace and harmony will be present. Animals will again be tame and harmless to the domesticated animals and humans. The wolf, the leopard, the lion, and the bear will dwell with farm animals. The lamb, the goat, the calf, the cow, and the ox. The child will be safe with lions and bears. The child will be able, according to Isaiah, to play over the hole of a cobra or a viper. Chapter 65, verse 25, and not be harmed. In other words, there will be peace during the millennium. The curse will be lifted, which was during the tribulation. God's holy mountain. 27 and 13. The temple mount. Tranquility, tranquility will prevail. The total lifting of the curse, however, will be at the end of the thousand years or the millennium. When death will be abolished, Revelation 20 and 14. What is tranquility? Freedom from stress, an untroubled state. Many people outside the nation of Israel will have a part in God's kingdom too. Luke chapter 13, verse 29, Genesis 12 and 13, where it speaks that all nations will be blessed through Abraham's seed, which includes the Gentiles as well. In that day of the regathering of Ephraim, which is the northern tribe, they will not be jealous of Judah, which is the southern tribe. And the south will have no hostilities toward the north. In retrospect, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at the 13th verse, before the tribulation, the church will be taken out of the world before the great tribulation. The book of Revelation states that at the end of the thousand years, Satan will be released. Satan will gather a number of unbelievers and is stated as the sand of the seashore in a found unsuccessful rebellion against the Lord and all righteousness. Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 through 10. Satan will gather these people and they will gather at Gog and Magog. But I'm looking forward to the day when this unsuccessful rebellion will take place. And verse 10 says the devil will be cast into the lake of fire forever. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 says books will be opened. The dead, small and great, shall be gathered before the great white throne. And this is the throne of judgment for the wicked. The sea will give up their dead. Oh, praise his holy name. This is the second death. Revelation chapter 21, the new Jerusalem and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, verse 4, and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. 
the new Jerusalem is also the bride of Christ, which is the church. The bride, the Lamb's wife, verse 9, the holy city built on 12 foundations and the Lamb of the temple. And there won't be any need for any more light of the sun because the Lamb will be the light. And, and this is the eternal state where God and his people will live in a city built on 12 foundations, 12 gates of pearls. And there will be a tree that has leaves that good for the healing of the nation. And that word healing literally means therapeutic, health giving. Aren't you glad that the Lamb will have defeated Satan and all of those that are against righteousness? There shall be joy. There shall be peace. There shall be singing of songs, I'm sure. And there shall be everything that is good. Because even death and all wickedness will be taken away. Aren't you glad? If you're glad, say yes. Yes today. Though the church is open by letter of Christian experience, candidates for baptism.